All right, let's move on to the next topic, and we're going to talk about our favourite Uruguayan, Rodrigo Bentancor. We saw him get a few minutes against Crystal Palace, and he's come out with a quote today saying he wants to be called up to the Uruguay squad. He's ready to play. HG, do you think that we should be starting him now? He should be coming into the team already, or is it a bit too soon and, and we should bide our time with Rodrigo? Um, like I didn't think I'd see him on Friday night. I was ecstatic yeah. that I got to because he's yeah. been my favourite Spurs player since he joined. Um, I just, it's a tough one because I think you know, most people, when you think back to what Benton Kerr did before his injury, that guy starts, he's in our, he's in our best 11. But yeah. Papsar has done very little wrong. And so it would feel a bit of a kick to, to just put Benton Kerr straight in, even if it is Chelsea. So it's a tough one. I. I would be tempted to put Benton Kurt in. I would. Um, I, I know that we don't need to, um, but still, he, he's so good on the ball and he's so good at making those runs that, frankly, Pepsar doesn't make those runs into the box. He's not much of an attacking threat. We see Pepsar doing lots defensively, which is great. Uh, maybe he does that better than Benton Kurt would. But it's <laughs> if it wasn't Chelsea, I'd be saying no. Right. I mean, if it was a, if it was a, if it was the next game, all the way, I'd be going. We'll keep Sar in. We don't need to do it. I, I know that's true, but uh, he is. I do think his ceiling is better than than uh, than Sar's right now. That's certainly who he is, and and like, like having him around means that like it's weird. You put if Hoiberg is in that team with Bentancur, those two have always played well together. They seem to understand each other's games really well. So. That, that there is a massive benefit, not just for you know for, to start games, but even for, for the last 15, 20 minutes, if Hoiberg comes on, that we, we, we really aren't losing much at all. But um, yeah, it, it, it's tough. If Saar starts, I won't be upset, but I do think Bentenko is the better player. Yeah, I agree that Bentancur is the be better player. I mean, Saar's 20 years of age, so I mean, he's got a lot of developing to do still. But isn't it a bit of a risk after such a long injury to just throw him straight in, especially in a game like Chelsea? It's definitely a risk. I mean, it's a, it's a risk not to. Like, like everything is kind of, you're just mitigating it in some, in some respect. But I just, like, it, it, it is tough. Because I, he, to me, he is in, he's enough of, uh, he's more, oh my gosh, I can't speak English anymore. <laughs> he is better. It's simply, put, simply put, he is better than Saar, right? Mm. And so we don't need to risk it. We don't need to push it. But I didn't think we'd see him at Palace and he was on the bench and was willing to come on and was perfectly fine for 10 minutes. So yeah, like 10 minutes isn't much. I just, it, it's a tough one. Like I think Saar will start. Mm. I do think Saar will start, but it's it, it's not a bad position to be in. Like we've, mm. we've got a, a person coming back on the bench who may well be better than the ones... And the same is true of Johnson and Richarlison. The people that might actually be better for that role, we don't need to rush them back in. I think mm. with um, I think with Bentancur, there's slightly too many variables at this stage for him to be starting. It wouldn't surprise me at all, and I don't think Bentancur would l will love this if this is the case. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if Big Ange just said to Bentancur, look, in January... Papsar and Yves Basuma are going to be going to the African Cup of Nations. Yeah. And that is when I need you to be absolutely at your top peak form, back as you were before your injury. When you come back from an ACL, you <coughs> may be fit to come back, but are you quite the same player yet? So I, th I think that's a variable, and I'd say Big Ant will probably be saying, we're going to drip feed you in, starting with five, ten minutes at Palace, 20 minutes next time, half an hour next time, and then maybe you know some more opportunities at half an hour but in the knowledge that when it comes to the Christmas break and then January, he's going to be his most important player because, you know, if he puts him in against Chelsea and he breaks down, does his ACL again, that's literally no good for anyone. He'll have to go into the transfer market. And from all the reports in the transfer rumours at the moment, they're looking at midfielders anyway. So maybe they feel very strongly that Hoiberg is going to go. And what they wouldn't want is to have to buy a midfielder and have to go straight in and be the mainstay from January onwards, I don't think. So that would be my thought. It's unbelievable going back uh, to what HG said, saying that, you know, don't really mind if Bentancor plays because we're doing so well and Pape Matasari is, is you know, we don't really need him uh, at this moment in time, um, like a, a complete necessity and like, you cast your mind back to when he got injured. It was like the end of the world. Like we, the season was pretty much done as soon as Ben Tancor got injured. So that's another testament to Ange and the coaching methods and, and the players that he's brought on in this time. But Sim, you think um, it's too soon for Ben Tancor to start? 
I'd probably say it is, but I'm obviously not on the medical team, so it's hard for me to say. Obviously, Ben Tenkor is itching to get back into the team and itching to get back playing football again. And um, we've seen as Ange Postecoglou say how, how Ben Tenkor has been knocking on his door every day, pretty much, or every week, saying, I want to play, I want to get back in, I'm ready, I'm ready. Obviously, Ben Tenkor, those quotes indicate even further that he thinks he's ready, he's not injured anymore, he's, he's ready he's to ready start. for a month now. Exactly, <laughs> that's the thing. And there are some players, let's be honest, there are some players where... They are that good. Like, if once they're fit, you just have to put them straight back in. Like, I remember a few years ago when um, I think we were when we were in the title race of Leicester. I remember Vertonghen got injured for like two months or something, and Wimmer comes in and he played really, really well with me. He had a great run and he and he was a really great understudy for Vertonghen. But as soon as Vertonghen's back, he's straight in because he's that good. You can't, you can't not like same with Kane. Like he was, I remember lead up to Champions League final, right? He was injured, um, having a lot of um, trouble with injuries. But as soon as he's fit, he's back in because he's that good. Um, you just have to put them straight back in because yeah. they're that level. Now, if you would ask me uh, when Bentancourt got injured, is he at that level? He probably was because he was probably one of the best centre mids in the league at the time, the way he was playing. He was playing unbelievable. He was playing at such a high level, probably in the form of his life when he picked up that injury. It was such a tragic um, timing for him. So the, I guess the question is, is he, is he at that level of player? Where if he that he's just that good, you just got to put him in as soon as he's fit and available, or is it a case of Saar has earned his place, and even though Ben Tenkor is it was brilliant before his injury, is there any reason to take Saar out at the moment? Because I'm guessing Saar is probably the person you're going to take out, unless you're thinking is he a challenger for the number six position. But I'm probably set thinking. I guess that's a different question: is he a six or is he an eight? We're not quite not 100 percent sure. I'd probably put him in an eight, but. I, I mean, just Basuma think considers himself an eight. Yeah, also that's also true. I just think for the time being, there's no reason to take as much as how as much as Bentecourt's been brilliant. There's if if Saar wasn't playing as well as he has been, I think there is a case to put Bentecourt straight back in. But I just think there's no reason to take Saar out at the moment. He's playing consistently well. I think it's important to show Saar as well that he's trusted by Postacoglu, and that doesn't mean even though he's in good form, oh the the, the more senior plays back, so you have to lose your place just because he's a fit and available. I think Postacoglu wants to send a message saying. Even though you're 20 years old, I trust you. You're a, you're good. You're a big part of my plans, and you're consistently going to be playing as long as you're playing well. You have that spot, and I think that's a good message to send. So, as much as I want to see Bentancur back as soon as possible, and I can't wait to see him back on the pitch and back to the levels he was showing pre-injury, there's just no reason to take Sarah at the moment, considering how he's playing. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what Barnaby was saying about the Afcon. You know, we we're going to need him desperately at that moment in time when Basuma and Pape Matasar go. For those, I think we've got three or four games, including the FA Cup in January, which which they could potentially miss. And we can't be having any recurrence of an injury or any sort of injury that could come from that ACL from overplaying him from now until then. So I would like him to, to stay on the bench for now, to be honest. Not maybe we got seven games in January, so he can in December, so he can start one or games here and there um, when the games are overloaded. But I want to keep him as fresh as we can for January because we, we that's when we're really going to need him. So, um, yeah, question for the guys though quickly. I like, guess start with Barnaby. Where do you see Ben Tenkor when he's fit? Is it more of an eight or more of a six, or can he just do both? Do you do not? Are you not bothered about where which one? Yeah. I think one of the exciting things is that they can all, I think they can all do all of them. Do you know what I mean? I mean, apart from, mm. I think there's only, there's only matters who can do matters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and, and, you know, we're looking at a bit of a downgrade when Gio comes in, but I, but Gio is a clearly a very talented player. Leo Messi really rates him. And, and maybe if he got a run of games, which would be, you know, only because of a matters injury, I think, then he could do much better than we've seen him in a Spurs shirt. But in terms of the other players, even Hoiberg, I think plays more like an eight for Denmark and scores loads of goals for Denmark. Uh, and, yeah scored that goal against Marseille uh, away for us, which was vile. So they can all play any of those roles. And I think that suits Ange so much because Ange, he's talked about it. He doesn't think formations are just about one player sticking here or there. It's about rotation. And I wanted to say on a similar thing, Pat Matassar does a lot of underappreciated leg work and engine work in this team. And it would not surprise me one bit if Ange is like, oh, you know, Maybe Bentancur is ready, but I'd rather bring Bentancur in for a Basuma if Basuma gets suspended again than lose the legs that Papsar is, is giving us. Because it's that example against Fulham, which is the best example. There are so many of those, but it, it's the one where he got back and got that clearing header in mm. away from home. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like he does so much of that that isn't quite as sexy looking as that, but it's really vital interceptions, reading the game and using his kind of 
never ending engine to really help us. That I don't think it's quite as simple as a lot of the Spurs fan base do in terms of, oh, he's the he's the least talented player in those two, so he's the one that Bentacur should come in. I think it'll be a matter of rotating all three of them, potentially four of them, when it comes to who's fit, you know, who's putting in the most amount of yards, literally data wise, in each game and resting and rotating. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty certain I've seen in games, I think maybe it's the Fulham one especially, but even on Friday night, I'm sure it happened, that Porro pushes further ahead of Saar. And actually, Porro is the one who's being tasked to combine with Kulisevsky and maybe create down that right-hand side. And Saar is really more... the, the I mean, it's, to say he fetches it is, is, is unreal because it's, it's not true. He's, he made the run for the first goal himself to start off the Palace. But I, I, I do feel that the... the that the quality on the ball when it comes to passing or creating maybe isn't there with Saar, but he's very good at getting it and giving it and very good at making simple passes. And like I think going long term, he's the closest thing to an actual six that we have. Like when he's at his best, that's going to be his role. I do believe that. But uh, yeah, right now as an eight, like n- n- none of us are calling for him to be dropped. It's not like with Charleston, where we're all thinking, hey, maybe we could do something better quite easily. Losing Saar means losing something. It's not a question of just saying we want to be better. We know that, that the people coming in maybe can't give as much as he can in certain areas. Where do you see Ben Tancor? More of a six or an eight or both? Do you think he'd be either? I think, I mean, he was a six for Juventus and I never really rated him. When, as soon as he came to Spurs and was an eight, I, I couldn't believe the player I was watching. I couldn't believe that Juventus hadn't used him in that way. However, in, in a midfield three or in five or however you want to view it, the Spurs right now, to be that middle one, what Basuma is, Bentancur mm. can do that with his eyes closed. I have no mm. doubt about that. But when I want someone breaking into the box, he might be the best midfielder we have at making those runs. And he proved that last season. So mm. to me, Bentancur can be either a six or an eight. I, I do mm. think Basuma is more of a six. I don't want Basuma making those runs, really, because he never did that for Brighton and he's never really done it for Spurs. But you go back to pre-season, he made those runs every game and was good at mm. it. So it, we have a lot of players that can do a lot of things. And so I think it is about that combination. Like who, who provides the energy? Who provides the, the nous? Who provides the, the metronomic passing? If we get one of those in, in each role, it doesn't matter so much. Yeah. Mm. Can I just bring up something that I think is really relevant to not only what HG is saying, but also um, what you said about Kevin Vimmer earlier on. Mm. What I find really exciting about Spurs at the moment and, the fa- and because Ange is now coaching the players to a point where they've all got confidence and they're all playing better, is that when it comes to the moment where, and it may happen this January or next summer or whatever, where there are some squad players who haven't had enough game time, then just similarly to how it was back when it was great under Poch, we are now going to be able to get big transfer fees for those players who are not getting a lot of squad time. So back in the day, I think we got, I think we got nigh on 20 million for Kevin Vimmer, you know. 18, I believe it was, yeah. Yeah, because he played, you know, like you said, 10, 15 games in a row, did well, kept us towards the top of the league. And now, let's say, you know, I don't think it'll happen, but let's say Bentico comes in and Pap Sar doesn't play for six months or eight months, and then he comes to us in a year or two years' time and says, I want to leave. He, Pap Sar would go for huge money. Now, I don't think mm-hmm. that will happen, but what I'm saying is those squad players are now going to take on a worth again, and we are going to be able to make money in, which will allow us to spend more money the other way. And it seems so simple now that we've got it, but actually that four or five years that we've had where we've got these managers who are not training the players well or giving them confidence has ruined our football club for those mm. that period of time. And it's just exciting that now we're back to a place where that's happening again, I think. That's a good point. And I was just thinking about this, though. Like well, We've talked about all the midfielders. There's one name we just haven't mentioned and haven't brought up, and that's Oli Skip. Like We just haven't even he considered him as an option do you do we think his time is he's on borrowed time at this point at Tottenham now it's a shame to even talk about because I was so excited about when he broke into the team yeah. about him being a big player for us you're and now t- we're not even considering him an option you're talking about probably the best performer I know the bar was very low but in the Nuno era in the beginning of the Conte era you know he came in and, and was one of the top midfielders for Spurs at that moment in time but when you're looking at the technical ability that all our midfielders have I'm not sure where Ollie Skip fits in anymore to be honest I think he's a rhythm player. Uh, I've got friends who are huge Norwich fans, and he's the most. They say he's the most talented player they had in Norwich for many, many years. It would not surprise me a little who's, bit. Who's if second most talented? Uh, Darren Huckabee, <laughs> uh, Emmy Buendia. They also love. 
Um, and then obviously after that, uh, Alex Pritchard. Um, but, uh, Madison, surely Madison's got to be up there and too. Matters, yeah, yeah, Madison. <laughs> and Madison actually did his ACL when he was at Norwich. I didn't realise mm. he'd done an ACL before. But anyway, oh, well, anyway, anyway, I think it wouldn't surprise me if Oli Skip got a Premier League loan, like a lower Premier League loan, maybe in January or maybe next summer for a year. He's still pretty young, but what he needs and has never had is a season of Premier League football playing every game. I still think he's a talented player and a good enough player. I just think he needs t uh, game time and therefore rhythm. I don't know what you think, HG. No, I mean, this is a, if you if you assume that he's never going to be used in the medicine role, right? That he's either going to be a six or an eight on the other side. Um, the other players are are ahead of him, right? Saar's ahead of him, Bentancur, Hoybjerg, Basuma. They're all ahead of him, and so yeah, like if I'm if I'm Fulham and I think I'm going to lose my biggest defensive midfielder in January, and I want another pair of legs to do something, he could really suit the way they play, um, because Paulinha is, is a firefighter and p picks up with the odd goal, but basically that's his role. Skip needs to play, and when he does play in a system that suits him, he's definitely Premier League quality. I've no doubt about that, but yeah, you know, whether he's going to get minutes at Spurs. Not this season. So I, I do think that you know, any loans that will happen will happen at the end of January when African Nations is finished and we know kind of who we've got around. And if Heiberg does go, then maybe we think, OK, uh, if we don't get a replacement, then, then Skip becomes that guy um, in the rotation. But it's, yeah, I, I think for Oli Skip, it's a shame because he is. He's 23. He's only really had that one season of football for Norwich. He's, he got injured under Conte. He's not really had a chance... Um, since then, and uh, not, not for a run of games, really. And everyone remembers what happened at the end of last season when it was him, Hoiberg, and the whole team stunk. And it had nothing to do with Skip. But people mm -hmm. remember the fact that he was in that side. And so it, it, it's rough on him. But I, yeah, I do think that you know, Barnaby's right. Alone for the second half of the season. And, and then we'll see what, what there is. Because he, he's. I, I don't want him to be the on, only there because he offers a club-grown status for European football. Like, I think yeah. he's better than that. And, yeah, 100%. and it, 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 it does feel as if that's, he's kind of going down that road, and I don't want that. Mm. And it's, it's mad to think he was actually uh, ahead of the, in the pecking order than Pape Matasar when the season started. And then he didn't uh, play that well at Brentford. And obviously, Sars come in since then, and, and the rest is history. But yeah, I think I do agree with you. Maybe a loan spell uh, to a lower uh, Premier League team to get consistent game time is the way forward.